I've got two new anime inspired shirt designs over on my merch store where everything is going to be 10% off for the next two weeks using promo code anime. Check it out at the link in the description below. Welcome to Lamar's Cards, I'm Matthew and today I'm going to be breaking down my top 5 decks for new CDH players. I have learned to play guides for each of these decks but one of them and those links will be down in the description. Like and subscribe if this is your vibe but either way let's get into it. Number 5 is Malcolm Tana, also known as Teamer Pirates or Tropical Malcolm. This is a proactive deck that looks to win primarily using Glinthorn Buccaneer in combination with Malcolm to kill the table. This being a one card combo with the commander, being a purely creature combo, and being in a deck with access to green's creature tutors, all makes for this being a deck that can consistently present wins that could be hard to interact with. This makes for a very straightforward game plan. Get Malcolm and Glinthorn out, protect them, and go for wins. If someone else is going to win, stop it if you have to, but keep in mind this deck is really concerned more with it being able to win, and that's what those counter spells are for. It's resilient to stacks, most counter spells, and all around a solid deck for someone wanting to get into CDH with a list that's consistent and relatively simple. If you're looking for something that's a bit more interactive or has some flexibility in how it chooses to win, it may not be for you, though there are builds using Malcolm and Vile Smasher that you may be interested in if you want to win with pirates in a more turbo playstyle. At number 4 we have Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, the Demir Ninja you may be used to seeing Devastate and Casual amped up to 11. This deck looks to use evasive creatures to stick down a turn 2 Yuriko and keep those triggers coming, using top deck manipulation to get huge damage off your hard to block creatures to keep your opponent's life totals in check until you can get a combat or combo finish. While your primary plan is Yuriko damage, you can also utilize Thassa's Oracle for a 2 card combo win, and use Doomsday Piles that you can crack with Yuriko to set up wins as well. This is another deck that has a very simple game plan, get down a creature, ninjutsu that into Yuriko, keep the ninja hits coming, but it looks to play a more reactive and controlling game plan along the way. Yuriko isn't as concerned with quick wins, so you'll look to use the plethora of interaction you have to stop everyone else. While the list may be a bit slow for some players, it can work in your favor to not be an early threat, leaving your opponents to worry about each other until you're at an overwhelming advantage that they can no longer deal with. You get to play with cool ninjas and lots of cards that don't typically see play in CDH, stick with a more traditional game plan you might see in casual or formats like modern, and two of the best colors in magic. If this deck is for you, you probably already know it. For number 3 we've got Godo Bandit Warlord, the mono red menace of CDH. This deck functionally has a 0 card combo with Helm of the Host, which Godo can tutor to the battlefield on ETB, and once equipped will allow you to attack with Godo copies for infinite combats. The deck has a reputation of turboing out mana, counting to 11 to cast Godo and equip Helm, and that being it, but there can be a lot more nuance to it. The deck utilizes stacks effects, protection pieces, and interaction to be able to more safely go for win attempts, and learning to utilize these properly can really set apart the experienced Goto pilots. Fortunately for new players though, while it can work around a lot of its shortcomings with more complex lines and planning, at its core it still has that ability to count to 11 and win as early as turn 1, and the general win con is very simple. This is a deck that really maintains that mono red, all in, make them have it type of feeling and is a great place for anyone looking to take that into CDH with a proven deck. These top two were a tough call, but for me at number two I have to go with Winota Joiner of Forces, the commander that completely redefined Boros, Stax, and Aggro in CDH. Winota is an incredibly powerful engine for a Staxy creature build, able to turn your attackers into free hate bears put straight into play attacking. This makes it very easy to build an overwhelming board state, lock opponents out of making the plays they want, and apply pressure to life totals very quickly. Winota primarily looks to beat face, but also has access to kiki-jiki combos to close up the game if necessary. While this deck can be played in a very commander-focused way, it also has the flexibility to tempo out specific pieces to slow the game down before more safely developing Winota to get value from later. If you've seen Winota in-game before, you'll know it's not long after she hits the table that players start getting locked out of the game. She's a powerful engine that attacks some of the most powerful decks in the format and is a fantastic place to start in CDH. At number 1 we have the 5 color warrior queen herself, Najila the Blade Blossom. One of the most consistent, versatile, and successful decks in all of CDH, Najila has shells in mid-range, turbo, and stacks variants, with her potentially being the best commander in all of Magic. Najila looks to win using your choice of 1 card win cons, like Derevi or Grim Hireling to take infinite combats with an exponentially growing army of warriors, but of course has access to any win con you want to run. 
Historically, she's been played more as a mid-range ad nauseum deck, but recently she's become more popular as a five-color turbo deck utilizing Thassa's Oracle, Underworld Breach, and her unique combos to present fast wins that can come down turn after turn all game long, or win through combat damage with your growing army. While this deck can represent a bit more of a challenge for newer pilots due to the density of tutors and ability to pivot for optimal plays, what it represents is a deck that will scale with you as a player better than maybe any other in the game. When starting out, it's simple enough to just slam to Revy and go infinite, but as you play it more, you'll discover the nuance of combat and alternate combo lines available to you, and it makes for an incredibly rewarding experience. Najila just might be the best deck in CDH, and for me, it's also the best to start with. 